Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. And we are zooming in and focusing in today on a great viewer question, and that is how to heal from years of distrust, lack of being able to rely on somebody who has been severely malignant, narcissistic, or psychopathic. Um, someone who has been a toxic manipulator, a toxic controller, to the point where they have really disrupted their trust, not only in themselves, but trust in others. So we're gonna really zoom in and focus in on this really crucial element that once again, I feel is extremely foundational. It's very, very basic. It's very important when you look at really healing from these abusive relationships, the emotional manipulators, the toxic individuals, the toxic controllers, the malignant narcissist, the psychopath, who have engaged in scapegoating, excessively controlling you, your behaviors, your thoughts, your feelings, um, the psychopathic individuals who have fooled you and duped you for months, years, decades, or even your entire lifetime, and you feel a really chronic sense of unhappiness and distrust. So we're gonna zoom in and focus in on how to really understand the cause that's created this effect and then how to separate your feelings so that you can then focus in on something greater, stronger, more powerful than this distrust. However, before we get started, I just wanna give a super huge shout out to those of you who have recently donated to the channel. It is great to, uh, to hear from you. Thank you so much for your support of the channel and keeping the channel here alive. It's an honor and privilege, once again, to be able to be here as a tool, a resource, and hopefully help make some sense. So absolutely thank you, thank you so much, and absolutely positively, if you would like to participate in the Peace and Harmony channel, please do feel free to donate at the PayPal Donate Now button that is enclosed here in the video. So thank you so much. So we're zooming in and focusing in on a little bit more in depth. Really, we're gonna go in depth in terms of understanding what trust is and how trust gets corrupted. It gets corroded. It gets devalued. We're gonna debunk that problem. It's to understanding that the core element that has been betrayed, violated by your boundaries, by your standards, by your thought process, by your feeling process and how you then engage in your perspective on things, your perspective on life, what you're capable of, who you can have relationships of, you know, with, your degree of comfort or discomfort in your body, your degree of comfort or discomfort in social situations, job, employment settings, education settings, things like church, things like grocery shopping, everything and everything under the sun is affected and corrupted when you've been in a relationship with a chronic controller, a chronic manipulator, someone who is malignant, narcissistic, filled your head and your heart with criticism, betrayal, um, the psychopathic sneers, the you know looks that could you know that devastate you, um, that you know really get under your skin, that have then you know taught you that their viewpoint is the right way, the only way, and that anything your behaviors, your feelings are wrong, that they're out of place, that you're weak, you're meek, that there's something you know. Why don't you just toughen up and shut up? Is basically the message that gets indoctrinated in those people. Um, who have been manipulated by the chronic controllers, the malignant narcissist, the psychopath, through the gaslighting, through the brainwashing. And ultimately, that is a corruption and a de um, devaluing of trust and reliance on people. Um, especially when these individuals are individuals who you, by virtue of the relationship, need to be able to have reliance on. There's an interdependency. There's a, you know, there's an, a, a back and forth that is required in the relationships. And by reliance, meaning that I can rely on you to have my best interests at the forefront. 
In other words, our relationship, based on virtue of the relationship, whether it's a parent, a sibling, a boss, um, your fiance, your, your spouse, your partner, your significant other, if you are engaged, you know, especially by an element of choice, with this relationship, there's the perhaps unwritten or unspoken foundation that I would trust and rely on the fact that you would have my best interest in mind or at heart. Per, you know, for example, raising a child, you know, you should have their best interest in mind at heart. If you do things that betray this through overly controlling, hypercriticism, um, scapegoating them, telling them that they're at fault, you know, not giving them the attention that they need, um, not giving them eye contact, guidance, validation of their feelings. You know, I understand that you're feeling scared. I understand that you're feeling sad. I will protect you. So you should develop a, be able to rely on certain individuals in certain situations. Likewise with your spouse or significant other. I should be able to rely on you that you're not going to cheat on me. I should be able to rely on you that you're going to engage in situations and events and decisions and choices that involve me, especially that are with my best interest at heart and in mind. I rely on you. It should be safe to be able to count and rely on people. This is the foundation of trust not only within others and in relationships, but within yourself as well. In other words, I rely on myself to be able to act in my own best interest. I can rely on myself to make decisions, choices, and have values that are aligned with my, not only survival, but my, my thriving, my, my thrival. Let's just call it that. You know, in other words, beyond survival. In other words, you know, I'm 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 not just going to leave, you know, lead a mediocre, mundane, you know, uninspired, lethargic life. In other words, that I can thrive, you know, and not just survive. In other words, sulk around, live, you know, not sort of engaging in the joy or the juice or really the creativity of life. Um oftentimes these malignant narcissistic people, they will lead you and teach you to believe that you are less than that you are not as good as particularly them or particularly quote unquote what they deserve yet they continue to you know keep you in the relationship especially for what you give them this is known as narcissistic supply if you're you know basically taken psychological hostage by a psychopath they basically you know engendered you or enslaved you as their their source you know psychopathic supply is very severe and the degree to which they will lie, dupe, and deceive is beyond really the capable capability of, of most individuals. So that is a very, very painful and a very, very distrusting feeling that a person will then emerge from. Not only distrusting of the world, but distrusting of others, distrusting of themselves. Because, hey, look, look at this relationship I got involved in. You know, look at me now, you know, I have nothing. I've been misled for years or I was raised by this type of person and I've never known what it is to have life going in my best interest. So there's a severe distrust that can be created. And, you know, a lot, it's very commonly stated, if you don't have trust, you don't have anything. And it's to understand the cause that's created this, uh, you know, this effect is because really a truly sense of reliance and safety on another, either between this, you know, they violated your, you know, being able to rely on them, count on them to be looking out for your best interest, either by virtue of their position, you know, a parent who's older than you has had more life experience than a child, a toddler, you know, they should be able to rely on their parent. That's Hopefully the whole reason why they get into parenthood is to feel that they want to help enrich and raise versus, you know, take others as an, as an extension of their needs and not take that and factor that in, you know, and, and be abusive um, as an outlet, you know, using them really, you know, in, in narcissistic relationships, um, psychopathic relationships, essentially you become like an, an outlet um, for, for their aggression, particularly. Um, in, in whatever, you know, 
their insecurity basically gets unleashed and projected onto you so that you can then embody and oftentimes voice for them their very insecurity. For example, if you are targeted and projected, you'll oftentimes find the very statements and feelings that you feel are exactly what is in the sender of that information. Particularly, you know, I feel so hurt. Um, you know, I feel, um, you know, so lonely. I feel, you know, that, you know, I didn't deserve that. You know, I feel that I can never have a relationship. I can never get married. Um, I'm alone. No one is, you know, no one loves me. These statements that you begin to speak, I feel, are exactly what is buried underneath the sender of that projector. And the narcissist oftentimes, it's, it's very interesting, um, actually, when you kind of get it sorted out. If you look at the sundry criticisms, especially, you know, that have violated your distrust, the criticism well, well, basically has the message that you should be chronically shamed. There's something inherently wrong with you. You know, you don't deserve to have love. You don't deserve to have a smile. You don't deserve to have your feelings, you know, validated. You know, how you're feeling is wrong. You know, you're wrong. I'm right. You're going to see this dichotomy, this polarity, this two ends of a spectrum. And it's a very, very usually extreme all or nothing. You are horrible. You're unbelievable. You are a rat's nest, whatever it is, you know, those hurtful words, the slamming of doors, the throwing of objects, the digging of nails into your skin, burning you with cigarettes, telling you you don't know how to cut a carrot, you don't know how to peel a potato, you don't know how to pour a glass of water, you don't know how to boil water, you don't know how. There's this, you know, almost ridiculous sense of criticism that comes at the hands of a narcissist that creates this distrust that I can't rely on you, you are not good enough. So, but you then try to prove and then stay in the relationship to try to, you know, secure their trust, secure this reliance. In other words, you know, you can rely on me. I'm big enough. Oftentimes the people who are targeted, they're so either so terribly afraid of being without this person or this person could be a family member who is their parent or their daughter or their spouse that it's it would make it more painful to be to go through the rigors of actually separating or they're not able to move out or they're not able to financially make it on their own so the the path to freedom is wrought with too many obstacles and seemingly impossible so they have to put up with this. So, but that's flawed and erroneous thinking. Um, it, it creates a distrust that will corrode you from the inside out. It will destroy from the inside out. You cannot bury, you cannot live, you know, with distrust. You, your, your body knows the difference. Your body knows, you know, you, the body does not lie. The heart does not lie. Even though you might want to push it down, shut it out. I'm big enough. I'm man enough. I don't need this, whatever, you know, you can tell me whatever. And then you just dish it back, you know, thinking that you're going to cope this way. Life becomes an endless series of defense mechanisms and you're not really living your life. And you're not able to see that the control is to keep you from your happiness. It's to keep you from thinking for yourself, feeling for yourself, and then being able to go where you need to, want to, and know your feelings and being able to tune into these because people oftentimes, because of distrust, they feel extremely lost. I don't know my feelings. I don't know how I feel. I don't know what my interests are. I don't know what my strengths are. I don't know how to feel comfortable in relationships. I can't cook because I was told I can't cook. I can't work because I was told I was worthless. You know, I can't have relationships because it is so painful and I have so many trigger points that I just can't handle working with people of authority because they are so threatening. Even though, you know, they haven't done anything to threaten me, I feel extremely threatened around these people. So these are the signs and manifestations that you will see, feel, and hear within your heart once you get a chance to tune in. But oftentimes people have gone through years without tuning into their feelings. They hyper, you know, hyper tune to and become vigilant to everybody else. Well, what is that person doing? 
What do they think? I should please them. I should, you know, then, you know, um, hold basically a, a, a measuring stick to me according to what this person thinks about me. In other words, well, I'll grow my hair long. I'll cut my hair short. I will become this, you know, type of uh, educated, you know, to please them. So it, it becomes all about tuning into the needs and feelings of another and, and completely bypassing your own because they have been invalidated. You haven't had the experience to know your feelings. You haven't had the tools to be able to know what your feelings are. They've been so invalidated, so extinguished, so snuffed out, so basically, you know, ground down and put out that you don't, you gave up. You know, somewhere along the line, it was so hurtful that basically you just said, I'm shutting down. I give up. If you've had these feelings, that's perhaps one of the most painful statements you can make to yourself and painful experiences, you know, where you feel I don't matter. You know, my, my feelings are worthless. I will never make it. I don't have what it takes. I mean, those are hugely, vastly foundational negative statements that will create what I call negative orderly direction, thinking, behaving, feeling, and relating. Basically, you're going down the, the wrong path quick. You know, you're backsliding. You're just looking for anything. And then people oftentimes wallow and flounder in this state of hurt and distrust for years. They might make a life out of it, an identity, and I am out of it. I'm so hurt. I'm so wounded. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm so hurt. I'm so wounded. I'm going to go find you know, some, some drugs. I'm so wounded. I'm so hurt. I'm going to go to the racetrack or whatever people, you know, the casino and start, you know, chronic gambling, um, and just sort of isolating and insulating themselves in, in wallowing and floundering, um, and trying to find, you know, anyone, any resort that they can then let themselves out from. And so they are taught to feel these negative feelings. And then furthermore, they don't have the trust and confidence in self to go and cry out for help to say, you know, I need help. You know, I am, this is, I, this is, you know, debilitating. Um, this is not only dysfunctional, but it is, um, debilitating. In other words, I cannot function. This is, you know, this is unbearable. Um, so they're, and they don't know, you know, who they can reach out to in the moment. So they just go forever lost. The, it is the distrust that is then, you know, chronic in these relationships. And uh, once again, very interestingly enough, is that the feelings of inadequacy that the people who are empathetic, who are, you know, I can love you, you know, I can love enough for the two of us, you know, I can take it, whatever, you know, the excuses that you made for this person, it's worth it. Or, you know, I will never find another parent. I will never find another lover. I will never find another... Uh, confidant, I will never find another best friend. You know, all these different excuses are just, you know, part of that whole distrust, you know, devoid of relying on oneself, devoid of having responsibility to get to know and tune into yourself and your own feelings. Because this person never did, oftentimes you were then taught to never do it yourself. Well, this person is the king or the queen of the crop. And if they don't pay attention to me, well, I sure, I sure, I sure should, shouldn't, you know. So this sort of valuation or devaluation of self and getting to know the skill set, the tools, the attitude, and the mindset to be able to do this becomes inoperative. You know, it just does not be become engaged. It doesn't become used. And what you don't use, you lose. So it becomes basically... Um, like a, like a, a wilted, uh, you know, vegetable, just like, I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't rely, you know, I don't have the strength, you know, you're taught these things. So it's very important for you to understand that you were taught this state of distrust. You were taught not to, to focus on your strengths. You were taught, you know, that you were the end result of those criticism statements. You were taught that you were horrible. You were taught that you were, a rat's nest. You were taught, you know, that um, you're too vain. You were taught that you are ridiculous. You were taught all these statements. Whatever it is, the the sneers, the looks, the statements in each person. I think you all know, you know, hopefully if you've been with the channel by now, 
what your trigger points are. And hopefully by now you're learning to understand some of the cause that's created this effect in your life uh, at, to the present day. So it's to understand that it's very, very important to come through and heal is you learn what trust is, what it is within yourself. We've all heard in God we trust. I mean, it's written on our currency um, in the United States. So when we think about that, that's a very profound statement. In fact, a lot of people don't even trust, you know, so when they go to church, you know, they end up crying, you know, why are you crying? Why are you crying? It's because it is so painful. I don't have trust in the Lord above. I don't have the faith of the Savior. You know, I don't, I've, I've, I've been shut out from that experience. And here's everybody, hallelujah, you know, and you're like, falling in tears, you know, you're a slobbering mess and you don't know why. All you know is you have a surge of emotions just coming out of you and you're embarrassed, you know, that is toxic shame at the hands of an abuser. That is why you're not crying because you're sensitive, you're crying because you've been a receptacle for abuse, basically like a waste basket, basket where someone has projected all of their insecurities onto you that you then are filled with that within. So it's very important for you to purge and get that out. And, you know, cry. I mean, you know, yes, crying helps because you're intense, you're in touch with your emotions. You're never so present with yourself when you do. Feeling these negative emotions, you feel like, well, perhaps it would never end. You know, I have to drive to work. I have to you know, do this, you know, you can't end up, you know, showing up uh, crying at the printer, you know, at your computer, you know, eyes puffy, swollen, men included, you know, um, because you're feeling your feelings for the first time. You need to be able to really face those rock bottom moments and look at those statements. You know, my relationships are, you know, blank right now. Um, my um, my trust in myself is blank right now. I don't have any friends. I don't have a spouse. I don't have a job. You know, no matter how much you've been trying to d deny these realities, you need to understand and, and give voice to those, no matter how painful. That is where you are at. And that is actually your best alliance, you know, allegiance and your best alliance is those, those, you know, rock bottom feelings, you know. I can't go on like this. You know, that's your heart speaking up. You know, I need to have, I want to have more friends, a better relationship, more smiles, a more simple life. I want to be out of debt. I want to have, you know, positive gainful employment. I want to travel, you know, and if you look at these, you know, emptiness that have been caused by the distrust that has caused you not to be able to take action it's very important then that you learn to pay attention to those feelings and then place trust and reliance within yourself to then go and seek and find these out in a healthy manner that is now arrived at once you're at a better place. In other words, once you've learned some of the lessons, you've done some of your recovery dates, you've you know actually learned your lessons, you've reviewed some of your recovery journal, you come into contact with some of your strengths, some of your desires. You're getting to know yourself. Plato, know thyself. I mean, these are the leaders of ancients, you know, many decades and centuries ago. Know thyself. You know, this might have been written on, you know, the old, you know, uh, temples. You know, uh, those were etched in stone. You know, these were the leading principles and concepts of, you know, these civilizations of these cultures, you know, you know, there, there might be some weight to that if that was, you know, and then understand the value of that statement, know thyself, research Plato, research that statement, think about what it means to you and to know yourself is to know and trust and be able to rely and to get to know, and you have to validate your own feelings. I feel. This is true. I feel. This is true. I feel. This is true. I want. 
This is true. This is possible. This is true. I can. Begin to understand the power versus force of truth. A malignant narcissist who is insultory, derogatory, critical of others, oftentimes if you look at their slanderous comments, oftentimes these are a projection on their tongue of the very insecurities that they host and harbor within them. But rather than them dealing with it because they were taught perhaps themselves to be, you know, in their own bubble and to have everybody see everybody as an extension of themselves and everybody should, is just exist to satisfy their needs. Well, you know, it's all about me. I mean, these people wear a shirt, they've got it written on their forehead. They, they don't, you know, they don't like to teach. They don't like to help. If they do, it's for other ulterior reasons, you know, um, be, to have power over others. They are very, they are not humble. They don't have humility. They don't have, you know, that sort of, you know, um, non-judgment sort of oneness about them. They're the chronic judgers. They're the chronic, you know, people with a nose in the air. The, you know, they, they walk around and they're just vacuous. I mean, you basically fall into a black hole when you enter into a relationship. And it, it will not stop until you say, stop, I, I'm done. I'm done with this type of life. I'm done distrusting. I'm done with the fighting. I'm done with this toxicity. This is no more. You know, I'm done with this, with this feeling of betrayal. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this feeling that I can't rely on myself or life. I'm done. You will have these declarative moments. And really until you have those declarative moments when you're 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 screaming out from your internal gut, basically I'm you know, then you'll continue to be plagued with this distrust. I can't trust this, I can't trust that, everybody this, everybody that you're you're making these sort of gestalt, you know, universal statements. And you're really harming yourself. The degree, you know, it's it's very much like when you distrust, you're really hurting yourself. And so you need to be the one to stop um, this. And so if you continue to harbor um, resentment, if you continue to harbor distrust, if you continue to harbor this, you're only hurting yourself. You are basically taking on that role for yourself. You are self-sabotaging. You are self hurting, you're self-mutilating, whatever it is that you're going against your own best interest, you're basically then living out an extension of them. You're still stuck in the traumatic bond. You're still living as an extension of them. In other words, the narcissist is like a, a, a two-year-old. Um, everything is about them. Mine, mine. They don't have a vocabulary, but you know, they're running around mine, mine, give me mine. And if, if it's not them, then they burst into tears. Mine, mine, you know, they just go on and just so, and then, so it's very important to understand, you know, sort of, you know, if you've ever studied child psychology, um, as I have, um, in depth, you know, you know, that also when infants are born, they don't have a sense of self, you know, they're always trying to make eye contact, eye contact, you know, they're looking at the mother, they're looking at the father, you know, eye contact, no matter who's holding them, you know, they're developing their, their retinal uh, cells, you know, they're, they're, they're developing the occipital lobe. They, you know, nothing, it, they are, they are not separate, distinct little people yet. They're just, all they know is their mother. And so if that infant hasn't had eye contact, if they haven't had holding, if they haven't had warmth, you know, they, they haven't developed their sense of self. All they are is an extension of the parent. Narcissists, I feel, are the same way. Everything is an extension of themselves. So if you are kind of like stuck at that stage where you haven't been validated, you know, you you haven't developed that sort of trust and to have trust within yourself, then that's where you need to go. And there's no shame in learning these these lessons. There's no shame in saying, OMG, you know, this is what I need. What you need is what you need. It is period, end of story. So be it. I mean, it is. It's better to be at one with the truth, whether it's in the privacy of these videos, the privacy of these of your heart. It's better to be at one 
in close to and open right there with the truth than to live in denial and live in years of suffering. Unequivocally, it's painful. Unequivocally, you will get through it. Unequivocally, you have to face the pain for it to feel good. So you have to kind of not be afraid to, you know, peel away the layers of the onion, the look you know, layers of the lotus to get to the pearl, you know, of, of truth. And it, I think it even talks about that in the Bible. You know, I would, you know, give this pearl for this entire field. Look at some of those stories. And perhaps that, that pearl is that of, of trust. And so if you've, if you've been separated from experiencing this, realize ways now that you can then find ways that you can rely on yourself. I can rely on myself too. I rely on myself. Begin to show proof in your environment that you can rely on yourself. So you can begin to have that experience grow. The self-esteem, the self-confidence that ensues will be then foundationed within you. You'll develop that little by little, but you need to repeat these hundreds if not thousands of times and find ways and more and more ways that you can rely and be trustworthy to yourself and that you will then deflect Others who are not trustworthy, who do not have your best interest at heart. It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out.